Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Let's close out the show with some coaching talk. Let's talk coaching, not necessarily rumors anymore, like a lot of these are done. Okay. But it's stuff that we haven't gotten a chance to hit on yet. Arkansas gets their guy. Okay. Probably like their 10th or 11th guy. Uh, I, I, he might have been the second guy, considering the fact that they only have one guy on the initial list. Yeah. Sam Pittman, Georgia offensive line coach, former Arkansas offensive line coach, fantastic recruiter, is an absolute character. Like He is... It, he is... Ed Orgeron was never like this. Pittman's a little goofy, but he can recruit with the best of them. Can he recruit to Arkansas? Like, I think that he will be able, he'll have some success in Dallas. Yeah, he'll have so. success, you know, Memphis, et cetera, et cetera. How many of those four and five star, you know, offensive linemen, skill players, which the, you brought the up? The issue to me, is, is, yes, he, there's no question he's going to build an offensive line. I think he can recruit those guys. He's been going into those houses and talking to those mom and days for a long time. Can he convince a quarterback? Can he convince running backs? Okay, if you're good at selling the old line, you could probably sell the quarterback. You could probably sell the running back. Are you going to sell receivers? Are you going to sell that DB that wants to come to your school? I mean, I don't, I don't know. He might be great. Arkansas fans are excited, and that's good for them. That's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to reserve judgment. Yes, sir. <laughs> I what? hope he does it, man. I hope he. I hope he keeps that going. What? It's fun. It's goofy, man. I I love that stuff. That's. A... <laughs> you think it'll be a good hire? I think they're trying to mimic the uh, the Coach O thing. But the problem is, is the Coach O thing did not work. It was a complete and utter failure. Yes, they're mimicking the Coach O thing at Ole Miss by well, taking I, I a guy they're... that only coached D line his entire life. And then he was a hell of a recruiter at Southern Cal, okay? Yeah. And then they said, oh, well, he'll be a great recruiter at Oxford. Well, guess what? It's harder to get kids in Oxford than it is in Southern Cal. Who would have thought? Yeah, oh, this guy true. was really good at D-line coach. Yeah, it's it's amazing. He can't coach the rest of the team. Now, and I think then, that they're seeing what he's doing at LSU. Fired here, getting fired here, it took him a decade of learning to become the man that he is now. Okay. Yeah. So if if you tell me, will he be Coach O? He absolutely has a chance to be Coach O at Ole Miss. Can he be Coach O at at Arkansas? What Coach O is now at LSU? Man, I don't. I don't. I think we're we're they worlds they better apart. be willing. Or they better be willing to apart. wait. Yeah. They they better be patient. But now, can he get them to relevancy? Can he get them to six and six and making bowl games? They they've got a clause that's, in his contract. That's what's that we got to figure out. Every six win season that he has, the contract extends another still, year. Yeah, and there that tells you if that's their standard of success, then I think he can do it. Now, yep. I don't think they're getting to six and six next year. No. I don't think because we talked about this. They before. are changing the offense again. Again, they went from a Petrino offense to a Brett Bielema offense, which is this guy's offense. And then this guy was let go or or left with Brett or whatever because they forced Brett to change his offense midway through. And then they went to an all powered offense again with Chad Morris, complete failure. Well, not not and power, that, but uh, all. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, up tempo. Uh, spread up tempo. Yes. And then now they're going back to. The original offense. Brett offense, yeah. which they forced Brett to change. I, I just think when you keep changing philosophies over and over again, you got to look at yourself in the mirror and figure out who the hell do you want to be. Well, and on top I mean, of that, you gotta, if you don't like the guy you got, that's fine. But you got to hire somebody that has that same philosophy because you've already started recruiting that way. Yes, that's that's the biggest thing is there's nobody left on this roster right now that will fit. I. Th- I think what Pittman wants to do. There may be some that can change. Oh man, I don't know. But if you if you're a great pass blocker, it is so much harder to be an athletic offensive lineman. Yeah. Lots of offensive linemen can pass block. Man, it is it is hard to find guys that are athletic enough to pull. You gotta I mean, be able you, to you watch those Wisconsin kids 
And I'm, they love left, to hit. Yeah, they're, they're left. Yeah, they like to hit. They don't like to get back and pass. No, no, no. They want to hit you, not with their hands either. They got that right. I just, I just think it's not as easily said to say, okay, take that big left tackle over there, and now we're going to pull him. And that guy's not used to pulling and running. Yeah, it's different. But there are left tackles out there that are not just used to it, but really good at it. Yeah, they love it. They're dangerous out in space. They absolutely love it. So I, it's going to be hard. I'm, I'm not sold just because you're changing philosophies again. And I, I, are they going to be patient? That's the question. If he we'll doesn't see. get to six wins after three years, let's say he gets a game better every year. And and after three years, they've won five games. Is that we're keeping him? Or are we firing him? And then we change the philosophies again? It, see, that's that's where it gets tricky. Because if you don't know how you're going to handle three years from now, if that's how it goes, if you're not prepared for that, then then you didn't do this well. You didn't do this right. But now if you tell me in three years, if we've gotten one game better every year, and we're recruiting and building talent, and we think that fourth year we can make a jump, then and you're okay with all of this, then I say you made a good hire. You stand by your guy. No matter how bad it gets, you stand by your guy. And yeah. you stand by that plan. But if you say that today, in three years from now, you got five wins on the schedule, and somebody gets pissed off and wants him gone, you just wasted everything you've just done for the last three years. You've got a – he did get a five-year contract. It's only $3 million a year, though. Yep, cheap. Uh, from the people that I have talked to, his staff salary is going to be double what Lane Kiffins is at Ole Miss. Well, yeah, it's a, it's the LSU deal. Yeah. It's Ed Orgeron was really cheap, but we're going to pay a whole lot of money to assistants. Yep, so we, we've got our front man. We're going to make sure our man. don't leave. Yeah, we got our head hog. Now let's go get the brains behind the, the face. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, it's not a bad way of building a staff, by the way. No. I'm not opposed to that at all. No, it's a, so, it's a great way if you've guess, got somebody that can be a good CEO. I guess the way I need to see is him alone. I'm not so – if he puts together some kind of all, all-star staff, which that staff's out there, by the way. You can go, yeah. you can go get those guys, especially if they're going to break up in the wallet. Then, <laughs> then yeah, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not against it at all. No, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, we brought up Lane Kiffin, of course. Now, we already talked about this a little bit. Lane is at Ole Miss. He's good. Actually, pictures tonight of him and Hugh Freeze eating out in Oxford together. They got the same agent. It Hugh Freeze ain't coming back to Ole Miss. It ain't no thing. But um, interesting stuff from his opening press conference where he talked about analytics. Uh, go ahead and tell tell this story. Well, so, so he talked about in the press conference, he said, I mean, he, he openly came out and told the media, when I was interviewing for this job, I let my bosses know. I'm going to be very analytical based on when to go for it, when to kick field goals, when to when to punt, and and we're going to go for it a whole lot more than conventional football wisdom is used to it. Yeah, we will not be conservative like we no. have been in the past. And he said, they know that. He said, media, get ready to rip me because it's going to be different than what you're used to seeing, and so therefore when it doesn't work, you're going to want to blame me. And he says, fine. I'm ready for that. My bosses are ready for that. Yeah. We know we're getting we're marrying ourselves to this analytical thing. If we've got a six percent chance of making a field goal, but the conventional wisdom says, Hey, you, you take the field goal here, we're just gonna take our shot at another down and we're gonna try to go for it. We think our offense is good enough that if we get an a, an extra down, an extra try, we can get more yards. Yeah. Uh still no word on Kendall Bryles. I like that this yet. line of thinking, by the way. Oh, as I love- much as I don't like analytics all the time for putting together gambling picks. I'm very analytics-based when it comes to how to run a team. Yeah, when it comes and, to decisions yes, on the field. on the field. No, no. Yeah. When I say I'm anti-analytics, that we're, we're having two different conversations. I like analytics and gameplay. Yes, 100%. A lot. Uh, no Kendall Browse yet, no defense court. His yeah. staff is not together yet. But one thing that you know Lane Kiffin will do is he will put together a staff of recruiters, and they will be bloodthirsty hounds. Yep. On the trail. Uh, Frank Wilson, who just left UTSA, who we assumed would go to LSU because he's yeah. the king of New Orleans, he was on the staff at Tennessee with Lane back in 2009. 
I mean, who knows what happens there? Yeah. We might get into a little bit of a, a bidding war for that. That's right. Um, you know, we'll we'll see what he draws up. I think Kendall Browse will end up the OC there. I do too. I think as he's, far as I DC, do think he's going to have an operational budget that that's going to be just fine. Yeah, I think it'll be calm to hire whoever he needs to hire. Yeah. Other than that, I I don't know who else to even look at. I no, I would I assume don't. he'll bring some guys from FAU, maybe, um, but they better be ready to recruit. Because that, that's what he's going to do. Different, it's a different ball game. I mean, he, he said the reason that he took the job is because he knows what can be done there because he was at Alabama, you know, two of the three years. That's right. Uh, well, he was there for three years. In two of those years, they lost to Ole Miss. That's right. So, you know, he, he thinks he can win big there. I think he I think he can turn it around. I do, uh, too. But I do, I will say this. If for no other reason, I love this hire because it's going to end one of two ways. Either it's going to be scandal and all sorts of crazy mess going on, NCAA violations and whatnot, because you can bet the NCAA has already set up a shop in the square in Oxford because they didn't like Lane to begin with. They didn't care about him at FAU. But now that he is at Ole Miss with all this, like you know they're going to be paying attention. The other side of it is Lane's a little crazy. Like You know Greg Sankey is just like, what are these guys doing? Like it, and, and Ole Miss said, we don't care. That's right. We're done with this. That's like, right. Like this is the perfect marriage of a program and a coach. No, I'm, like, I'm very. He fits full, so I'm, well there. I'm in full support of telling Greg Sankey and the NCAA to go shove it. Yeah, just shove I, it. Right I, up your I ass. love this. No. I, th- I think it will be entertaining. We're going to run our program, and we're going to try and win, and we're going to yeah. do whatever it takes to win. We're going to do what the same you thing everybody else is doing to win. By the way, yeah, I, I think it's great. I think it's fantastic. Uh, I, I hope that it turns out like it, I hope it turns out like the good part of the Hugh Freeze years, like and without all the bad stuff because I don't want to deal with that anymore, especially not close to here. I, I think football is better when Ole Miss is good when it, when everybody is good and not dealing with crap. I agree. So I don't like all the drama. I just want the good stuff. You know, like I want good games. I want all that. So we'll see what happens though. Uh, Missouri hires Eli Drinkwitz. And they give him $4 million a year. And at this fool's press conference, he said, our goal is to win the Sun Belt every year. Do you see this? That's it. He said, oh, I'm sorry. This man was introduced about this time last year at App State. For his first head coaching For job. For his first ever head coaching job. He was the offensive coordinator at NC State NC before State. that. He was really a good offense, by offense the way. Offensive coordinator at Boise State before that. That's right. So he's had some high-powered offenses. Yeah, so he he was under Brian Harson, and then he goes with Dave Doran over to NC State. Did really good job at uh, NC State. Gets the App State job. Wins twelve and uh, twelve games. Goes twelve and one. Uh, was just on the cusp of getting that New Year's Six Bowl. Had they not lost to Georgia Southern, and now he's going to take Missouri to the Sun Belt. And now he's taking Missouri to the Sun Belt. So he he did correct himself, but obviously you could tell it was the same speech that he used this time last year. Uh, it was a pretty good speech. It riled up everybody, and they all laughed about it. It was it was fun. Um, I don't know what to make of this guy. He he is Gus Malzahn. I mean he he worked for he was an assistant for Malzahn, I believe, at uh, at Tulsa. So, I mean, we'll see. Like it, he he came from the same coaching tree, like it, Arkansas high school football. All that I was surprised Arkansas didn't hire him. Um, we'll see if he turns into another Gus Malzahn. I think he can do good things there, but. I, who knows? It's so hard to recruit there, I think. I mean, at $4 million? So, just get, so we're get all... a $20 million guaranteed contract. Just so we're all clear, Ed Orgeron just went 13-0. and 0. His base salary is $4 million. So, this guy has one year of head coaching experience, and he's making the same amount of money as a guy that is going to play in a playoff game. The number one seed overall. In the best collection of talent that we've ever had in the playoffs. A rising tide lifts all ships, man. That It's going right nowadays. It's insane. That's it. You're, you're going to be hard-pressed to find uh, an SEC program that pays less than $4 million for their coach, other than Arkansas right now. And so, we'll see. I, I'm willing to bet that their coordinators will not be making $1 and $2 million each. I would not. Just a guess. Offensive now, let's talk about a uh, a former SEC coach. He is an analyst at Alabama. Butch Jones is up for the Colorado State job. 
along with Steve Adazio, who I don't think is going to get it, Kevin Wilson, former Indiana coach, former Ohio State offensive coordinator, et cetera. Um, I'm a little surprised here. Uh, if for no other reason, then why in the world is Urban Meyer involved in the Colorado State coaching search? I understand. He was a wide receivers coach at Colorado State from 1990 through 1995. Other than that, he's had really nothing to do with the program. So, but he is in the room, like, for these interviews. He is helping lead the search for Colorado State's coaching job. I don't understand this at all. I think Butch would do fine there. But, I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I thought Steve Adazio would have been a good fit here. But, I mean, I could I could be wrong. Well, well, I mean, what do you think about Butch getting another job? Uh, if Butch got it, 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 I don't I don't know that it moves the needle at all. I mean, he might do fine. He might not. I don't know. I'm, I have an opinion about why Urban Meyer's in that room. I'm going to keep my mouth shut on that. I say enough crazy shit on this show. Give give me the toned down version of it. There is no toned down would, version of it. Okay, just give me give me the the route because I want to hear your thoughts on it. But I don't. He's a whore. That guy will do anything for money. Do you think? Why I mean, is he in that room? Why is he in that room? Because they're, I guess because, because they're, they're paying him, him. and that's, that guy will take money from anybody. That's crazy to me. That's why. Like that cannot be. That is the truth. The sole reason. Why is it not? He's he's what amount he's of a, money would it take? He's an assistant or some type of advisor, not an assistant, to two other organizations. Like he's at a the same consultant time. to yeah. So technically, he's being consulting right now for three schools: Utah, Ohio State, and now Colorado State. That guy will take money from anybody. He will just take your money. That's crazy. What do you think he's advising Ohio State on right now? Do you think Larry Day gives a shit about what Urban Meyer R- thinks? Ryan Day. Ryan Day. I've I'm, a, I'm sure he's like I've got a buddy named Larry Day. Ryan, like he's a first time head coach. I'm sure that he's still calling Urban like. Just, I don't. I don't hey, think what he's calling over for anything. You don't think so? No. I think that team is playing loose and together, and they look so much more cohesive with Urban out of there. I don't think you're picking the phone up to call him for anything. You might be right. I might be wrong on that, but I'm going to tell you this. They looked loose and good before Urban came back from his suspension last year. I know they were playing nobody, but all this season they looked the exact same way. Yeah. No, I, don't, you're right. I don't – and he might be helping them with game plan. He might be helping them with a lot of things. But it's not like Urban was, like, the offensive genius or the X's and O's guy. Like, Ryan he, Day He used to be that. back he in used the day. To be. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But I don't think he's doing that anymore. The, the Utah thing I can kind of understand because, you know, Kyle Whittingham was his defensive coordinator, and Whittingham's been there ever since he left Utah. I mean, Urban has gone and won national titles at Florida, took a year off, went and won national title at, at Ohio State. Now he is back out of coaching again. We and talk Whittingham about Lane. Still we coaching. talk about Lane and his scandals. All right, what scandalous things has he done? Okay, he left Tennessee after a year how, for how his about dream this? job. How about this? It's, he got fired on a tarmac. It's he didn't nothing, really do anything. But the only scandalous thing would be good. Joey Freshwater. Right? All right, like he went out and started hitting on some co-eds in Alabama. All right, um, and that's after he was getting divorced. Yeah. So I don't, to it. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what's scandalous about any of There's, these things. It's not if anybody, scandalous. if anybody's got scandal and stank on them, it's Urban Meyer. That guy is scandalous. That guy's a shyster. Yeah, yeah. I'd I mean, be I, real I can't careful. Argue with you. If I was writing checks to Urban, I'd be terrified. I'd be terrified. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on from there. Interesting development. Tampa, South Florida has hired Jeff Scott co-offensive coordinator from Clemson, and you knew it was just a matter of time before some of these guys were poached off that staff. And they talked about it last year, how big of a difference it was that Clemson just maintained. They were steady. Guys loved to work there, et cetera. And people want that Dabo magic. Like, they have seen Dabo has won two national titles. We want some of that winning down here. And it's going to start happening more often. Now, Brent Venables may be a different kind of beast. Yep. He may be, he's making $2.2 million. He may not ever want to leave because he doesn't seem to be interested in a head coaching job. There was a day and a time where it seemed like he was. Yeah. And I think that time might have passed. No, because he could, if he put his name in the hat. Oh, if, no, that's what I'm saying. Not, he, not that the jobs have passed. I think 
I think his desires have changed. Yeah, he's I think co- his ambition has changed. He is. And the, I could be wrong on that. I don't know the man. No, at Clemson, he is the head coach of the defense. That's right. And no, they they have. I mean, he, I I say I refer to things all the time as the Dave Aranda effect. I mean, it was it was the Brett Bilmo Bilmo effect before yeah. it was the Dave Aranda. Yeah, effect. Brent Venables. Uh, it, it, you, you know, just the crazy get to thing, be the head coach of the, of one side of the football. And the fun thing is you get to focus on that one thing, right? Yeah. So, like, last year they had those four defensive linemen that just wrecked everybody. And it wasn't just four. There's, you know, the oh, backups. Several, and yeah. And, I mean, they lost four of them to the NFL, and it, one of them was a backup. I mean, it's just ridiculous. So, they had that, and they could scheme with that. This year they don't have those same guys in the trenches – but they do have Isaiah Simmons at linebacker, and they almost play like a box and one. It, like, it's really strange the way that they play defense this year, but he was able to scheme up and draw up stuff for that because he only has to focus on one thing. That's right. Like it, When you are a coordinator, you get to focus on one aspect of the game. When you are a head coach, you are a CEO. You have to handle everybody and everything. And he may not be interested in doing that, but Jeff Scott obviously was. And I think more guys on this staff will be eventually. Um, it's not just Venables that's going out to recruit. It's not just Dabo. There are guys on that staff that go out and recruit. And they have done a hell of a job Oh yeah. over the last five, six years. Well, they've built a monster. Yes. And and it will continue to be that way. Yeah. But they will. you'll see guys start to drop off now. Um, and I don't know how much it changes things because obviously at Alabama, it didn't change much. But when you saw like that little chink in the armor... Like it, then things start to happen. If you end up with injuries here and there, you end up with something that goes wrong. It the expectation level at Clemson has changed. I we agree, and then I I disagree with a little bit of it. I think you're not seeing anybody leave Clemson for a lateral job, and that happens at Alabama a lot. Dabo, as much as I'm not a Dabo fan at all, Dabo and Nick Saban could not be more different to work for. One, I, I agree with that. One is an absolute meat grinder, and yes. the other might be one of the, seemingly, appearingly, to be one of the best guys in the country to work for. Yeah. Um, so, and so I, that's, I don't know. So when, you say, when you say guys move for lateral jobs, it's not a lot. And then, and then you have guys that leave there, and they don't even respect him enough to tell him anything. Now, that they was just disagree. They just disappear. And you say that's that was all Dan happened. Enos. That's that was one re- guy. Re- yep. And, and but honestly, but Enos just, said that that's one, not what happened. It's but. just one. It's just one guy that did that. It's just one guy that left for a lateral job as the OC. It's just it's just two guys that left that were co-OCs. And as soon as they left publicly, we find out they don't like each other. And they were fighting and arguing over who was going to run the offense the whole time. Anyway, I don't think that's happening at Clemson. I oh, no, 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 I agree with you. But I don't think that's happening at Clemson. These are the things when I talk about how I think things are going downhill for Bama. That doesn't mean you're going to be four and eight in a decade. No. All right. I just don't think you're going to be, you're going to find ways to lose games because there's always going to be some type of, I just think it's too much of a meat grinder. I think yeah. the pressure is too high at all times. And, and it, it just, no one wants to work in that environment for a long period of time. The one guy you got, and you got him forever because nobody else wants him anymore, is Sark. Congratulations. You're married to an OC. He'll take the ass chewings from Saban. He'll take all the meat grind you get because I don't think anybody else is giving him a job. You might be right. You might be right. But that's, Clemson doesn't have those things. So I so, think they can lose guys, but they won't lose guys the way Bama loses guys. So back to Jeff Scott taking the job at USF. Think he'll do good? I think he'll do fine. Uh, South Florida, I mean, they need to upgrade. They need to put a bigger commitment to football forward before you will see them be able to do anything like UCF has done. Oh, I um, totally agree with that. UCF they, has put some cheese into football. Yes, and and USF wants to be on that level, but they don't have an on-campus stadium. They they play in Raymond James Stadium, the, the Bucks Stadium. You can't be a big shot. You can't want to be a big shot if you don't want to do the things big shots do. Exactly. And that's that's what I'm curious about. Like, no, did but they see, tell I don't know that the on-campus stadium thing matters so much. But you got to... It matters a little bit because it's a money thing. Like, it, uh, the money, they have to split that money with the city. Well, it's true. the same thing that Memphis has at the Liberty I, yeah, Bowl. Yeah, I get it. Like, you don't get all of the revenue from that's right, But that. you also don't have the billions of dollars it costs to build that thing either. Agreed. But at UCF found a way to raise that money. 
And other schools have found a way to, like, it doesn't have to be a massive thing. Like, group of five schools are not going to draw more than 40,000, 45,000 anyway. You're right. You're not building 100,000 in Dallas. That UCF stadium only seats 45,000 anyway. That's right. You're not building building these big SEC mega palaces. If UCF had wanted to save money, they could have easily played in the Citrus Bowl. You know, That's that's not that far away from campus. It is what it is. But they realized, okay, this is going to cost us money up front, but it's going to make us money on the back end. If we put everything we got into this program, we'll be able to do big things, and they have. So they've they've done good things. I think USF, like, they got to build, for, like, they got to upgrade their facilities. I think you got to upgrade all those things before you build stadium. I agree with that. I don't 100%. think, because I think that's the last thing you need if you're trying to do facilities and that types of stuff. You you got to make the practice squad. You got to make the locker rooms. You got to do what you can to recruit. Where you actually play the games on Saturday is so much smaller of a part of of, of everything. As long yeah. as you've got a good tailgate, you build a good home crowd envi- environment. It, none of the rest of it matters. It just doesn't. Yeah, um, you, you can't build a new stadium with a three and nine football team and expect nope. people to show up. Nope, you're exactly right. I'm curious. I want him to do good because I, I just a. I like the American. I want the American to be a good conference. And uh, and, and, and it's better when South Florida's good. It's better when, when the yeah. teams that are supposed to be good are good. That's right. So, uh, And then finally, last note here, Dave Aranda. So in the time that we started recording this evening, we're recording on Tuesday night. In the time that we started recording to the time that we are finishing up, this is our last little bit of the evening, Dave Aranda was expected to take the UNLV job uh, there was an AP report that he had been offered it, and it was just a matter of signing the papers. And then just a little bit ago, report comes out, Dave Aranda will not be the new head coach at UNLV. Like, and it, it seemed to make sense because he wanted to be a head coach. He was going to have to take a pay cut for it anyway, but we've seen a lot of coaches do that over the years. Gus Malzahn did it and went to Arkansas State and turned it into the head coaching job at Auburn. Um who else is that? Lane Kiffin just did it. You know, was making one point eight million as an offense coordinator at Alabama. Went to the Florida Atlantic for a million, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, coaches have done this because you have to go back and prove that you can be a head coach before some of these bigger jobs will hire you. This wasn't. I don't know what happened. Like this was insane. Reports came out that he was never offered the job. Yeah, the new report is, is there was never an offer, and that it's going to be uh, Marcus Arroyo. From that's who they're, that's Oregon. Who they're targeting. So I don't know. If that's who it's going to be. That's who they are that's, targeting. Yeah, that's that's the the name right now. Like that that was the name before, and now it's the name again. And for about eight hours there, it was Dave Aranda, and it was going to be Dave Aranda. And he's well, I'm really happy it's not. Yeah, I'm good. So and and not that he was going to leave before the playoff run was over anyway. But I don't like. I just don't like it. Strange. Very strange. Just keep the family together. You uh, you got, got a nice that little right. family going on. It Keep it together. it uh, it won't be long before you know if LSU keeps this going over the next couple of years. Well, I know that we're like, gonna lose guys. Yeah, it's it, part it, of winning. You're gonna you're you got gonna it. lose people to the staff. So you got it. It'll be interesting to see. So I think that's uh, is there anything Do else we that we talk need to Norvell at all? Do we need to? I mean, he he took uh, Kenny Dillingham, uh, Auburn offense coordinator, who was his offense coordinator yep. last year. Uh, rumor is he's gonna take Adam Fuller. Who is his defense coordinator yes, at Memphis? Uh, was the defense coordinator at Marshall? Uh, I think he's done a really good job too. Um, if Ryan Silverfield does not get the Memphis head coaching job, uh, all reports are that he will join Norvell as the offensive line coach in Tallahassee. Um, I will tell you this: Norvell will build a staff that can recruit. Like that will happen. I saw Norvell's face at the end of the American Championship game, standing. Right there, as soon as again, he just shook the other coach's hands, he puts his hands on his head, and he kind of looks around. And I'm telling you, I looked in that man's eyes, I saw into his soul. Right now, he is in, he is in Tallahassee today. Right now, he regrets it. He abs- if he could undo it, if he could snap his fingers and go back and not take this job, he would do it in a heartbeat. I don't agree. I, I think he he may regret it eventually. I think he regrets it right now. I don't know, man. The gra- he is he said it a hundred times over and over again at Memphis. The grass isn't always greener, and I think he left a place that he had built up so much goodwill. 
And now he's going the, to a place where it's just going to be a pressure cooker. Oh, it's definitely going to be that. And I'm not saying he's afraid of that, but at some point you got to take was, that leap. Like if if your ultimate goal is to win a national championship, okay, then you have to go to this job because it is one of about 15 places that can win a title. Okay, like that's that's it. Like there's not a lot of places that can actually win a national championship, and I, I think he's at one of them. Like, there's there's three in the ACC, and it may only be two now. But it's Florida State and Clemson. In the SEC, you got five. In the Pac-12, you got one. In the Big Ten, you got... So, in the SEC, the right guy, the right guy at Tennessee can't win. I don't think so anymore. I think he can win an SEC East. He might even win the SEC. If you win those, you can win it all. When's the last time Tennessee won the SEC championship? Not, we're not having that conversation. I, I don't, when was I don't, the last time they've had the coach to do it? It's been a long time. Okay. I You're saying they can't, though. You're I don't, saying they absolutely cannot. I think that the landscape has changed we so much that they can't. We a whole different conversation. Yeah, we certainly did. Uh, Taking shots everywhere. But we'll we'll take a few minutes here. That's that's fine. We can talk about this. Uh no, I don't think Tennessee can win. I think the recruiting landscape has changed so much. I understand they got a lot of money. We disagree so much on this. But I I just I don't I don't buy it. We just okay. I mean, I don't you, think they've gotten the guy. I don't think they're close to the guy, but I, I also think, think that they've kind of got the same problem that Texas has got the, the, where that's a different that's an but you can solve that problem. You're how? saying they can't win. I'm saying they can't solve that problem. I'm saying Texas can't solve that problem. I don't think Texas can win a national championship right now. Well, I hate on Texas a lot, but I don't. I think they absolutely can win a national championship. I'm not saying they will as they're currently constituted, but I'm just saying that's a place that if you're a big boy head coach, you take that job, you absolutely can win a championship. You got to get the boosters out. Okay, but that's not impossible to do. I mean, you you might be right. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not good at coaching. I'll tell you this: if I got a job like that, I'd feel very comfortable telling the boosters, uh, "Leave the checkbook, hit the door." Yeah, hit the bricks. The, I'd right. be real nice about it. Leave the check. All right, Big Twelve teams that could actually win the national championship: Texas and Oklahoma. Like in, in today's age, no, no, I absolutely, I, I absolutely think TCU can win. I absolutely think Baylor can win. Matt Rule this time next year. If he does what he does this year, but he wins the championship game. So you think he's getting in because now he's done it two years in a row and everybody in the committee is going to put his ass in there. And if they continue to build and they're that much better and that much more experience, you win two games, you've won the title. So just broad, generalized numbers. How many teams do you think in the NCAA can actually win a national championship right uh-huh. now? 30. I take your number and double it easily. But I think the right guy's got to do it. If Nick Saban said, I'm a mercenary and I'm tired of all these gumps, I'll take anybody who'll pay me. Highest bidder gets me. You don't think three years at Oregon he can win a national championship? You don't think four years at Tennessee Saban can't win a national title? You don't think two or three years at Texas he can't win a national title? Or at Baylor? I think it's really difficult. I'm not saying it's not, but it's, hey, guess what? It's difficult now. He just had the best quarterback he's ever had in the history of Alabama, and he didn't win. Yeah. It took somebody not as good as that guy to come in and save his ass a couple years ago. No, that's not right. It took this kid (laughs) to come in and win the game. It took that kid to come in and win it. One half of football. One yeah. half of football. Yeah. But the two years that that kid had control of the roster and control of the team, couldn't win it. Yeah. No, no, I'm with you. I think it's really hard to win it now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I just, but, I don't, but that doesn't mean that other places can't win it. That's just a ridiculous statement. I, I don't think it's ridiculous. I mean, just because they don't win it doesn't mean they can't. I that cha- that that right there goes it, to the philosophy that I disagree with so much with you and why I hate this sport. As much as I love it, I have this love-hate relationship with it. It's there's only so many people that are invited to the party. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you go undefeated. And it doesn't matter if you're at Tennessee, you go undefeated, you win the East, you win the SEC, 
tough shit. You still can't win. I'm not saying that they can't win. Like, if they win all the games on their schedule, yes. 100%. But I, I just don't think they will do that. I don't, I don't think for the next 30 years, Tennessee will win a national championship. I, I don't I'm not saying they will because I don't know if they got the right guy yet. But if they, I, I, once again, if Saban just said, there's a lot more that goes into I'm, it than just like here. a guy, typically. I, I get it, but you don't think that guy, you don't think Saban and Dabo and these guys know what it takes to do it. And they won't bring those philosophies and those things with them. They don't leave but, everything behind. I mean, but how many, He's going to take that, 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 how many that of athletic those guys trainer. Are there? He's like, going to take that, that that workout guru that shoots everybody with a stairwell. He's coming with him. How many? Yeah, but how many guys are there? Yeah, Saban's not going anywhere. I'm just and Dabo's not going anywhere. Both those. So w- one day Saban's going to go somewhere. Yeah, he's he's going to leave. That's right. He's just going to retire. That's what I'm saying. And I don't think that's a long way away. So that means that changes the landscape of all the SEC. So at that point, like we we just saw Urban Meyer leave Ohio State. And now Ryan Day has got Ohio State. Yeah, but Ryan Day is a Ryan Day's just different. I think Ryan Day's a really good coach, and I kind of think he was running more of that program than we thought. I mean, he's only been there for a couple of years. But I understand that. But he was the guy they trusted to be the head coach when yeah. Urban was suspended. This was an obvious ease on in situation. Yeah. That's a yeah. different situation than most. If they didn't have a Ryan Day situation, Ryan Day goes two and two in those games while Urban is suspended, and Urban decides to, to to fly the coop and walk away. Yeah. They don't give the job to Ryan Day, and we don't know what happens at Ohio State. Now you, a million things could go wrong. You're right. I mean, it's kind of the and same thing with Lincoln Day. Riley at, a, yeah. at, a, at That's Oklahoma. Right. That's right. Like, if the offense isn't all that good, then they don't give him the job. Like it, Or some booster says, I don't trust this kid with the job. Yeah. I want an experienced head coach. And so now Lincoln Riley – free agent, he goes and takes the job somewhere else. What if he was the Tennessee coach? Because that happened. Tennessee's looking for a coach that very year. And they're like, hey, we'll give you the job. We're a trash fire. And then they just caught the next hot thing. You don't think that could win the national championship? Now, he hasn't won it at Oklahoma, but it doesn't mean he can't. No, I, I think he absolutely could win. Oklahoma's one of those teams that I think could win it. But I'm saying but, if he was somewhere else, I think Lincoln I think Riley everything is more of it than, the environment than. around the program has to be great for it to work. That's why Texas isn't winning right now. That's why Florida State isn't winning right now. Like I, I don't know that Norvell can win a national championship. I agree. With I think the that Florida that is State a place, problem. and I've said that, that I've been on record of that. Yeah, at Texas, man, there's a part of me that's starting to believe it's not the boosters and it's not the environment. I just think it's too big of a job for Herman. It, see, but it, did you not think it was too big of a job for Charlie Strong? Well, I didn't at the time. And today, I realized I was wrong about that. So, I mean, who would it not be too big of a job for? Well, like, I don't maybe know. Matt Rule, I guess. Like, but it, these guys, these guys have won at lower levels, but they've never won it at, at big uh, levels. At big levels, yeah. And that's the thing. Like, it, it's yes, it would have I don't to take think the right finding guy. The great coach is easy. I'm, this I'm very this much, is a very Interesting philosophical conversation. I don't think finding a great coach and building a great program is easy. I, Me and you have gone back and forth on Twitter a lot in, in having this conversation. We had a little bit with TJ while we were recording his show. God, man, we're going forever. That's fine. I don't care anymore. Yeah. Uh, it's late, and, 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 and if you're still listening, great. We and appreciate if, you. And if you're not, then, uh, you know, you're enjoy, missing your, out. enjoy your evening. But uh, I, I just think a lot of these administrations are really bad at this. I think they're all really bad at it. If I could, if I could get myself any job in the world, it really would to be work to work in, in the athletic department of, of of one of these major schools. I think I'd be good at it because I'm good at managing people. I'm good at managing egos like a champ, and I can handle budgets. Yeah, and I'm also pretty damn good at negotiating. I think all these guys are bad at all of those things. Yeah, you probably all right. Of them. I would have a relationship with my coach where he understands we're happy and you're safe. These are our expectations. You're meeting these expectations. You're not going anywhere. But at the end of every season, I'm going to call every agent I know, and I'm going to get a list of people that might be interested in this job, not trying to replace you. 
But if you fly the coop, I can't be caught with my pants down. I can't have to hire a, 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 a search firm. A, why hire a search firm? I can just do this. They hire a search firm because they're really bad at it, by the way. Yeah. And then the search firm comes back with one name. Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't help anybody. No, no. You got to have a plan. And I would have a plan every year. I would know who's at least interested in this job and who's not. And just hope Bill Belichick doesn't ever call me one day and say, hey, I'm interested. It's the only way you're not getting fired. Yeah. Bill calls, you get fired. That's the way it goes. That, that's just a me thing. And and I'll, you'll be honest about it. Like, me and you will have that relationship where you know that. When there's a couple of national championships, I'll tell Bill, eh, you want to come just work for me? <laughs> Our two head coaches. Yeah, we'll have a we'll, duel. We'll, we'll figure something else out. But I, I just think these front offices are – I call them front offices. These athletic departments. I think they're really bad at all of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I appreciate right. the fact that Lane had an honest conversation about I'm going to do analytics and I'm going to do things that that your other football coaches don't. If you don't like that, you're you're not going to be happy with me. We don't need to have this relationship. And and I appreciate that. I would want to have the relationship with my coaches where I I wouldn't meddle in how they do things, but I would have an expectation of, hey. You're, you're not going for it on fourth down, and we're missing a lot of field goals, and we're giving up a lot of field position. All the analytics say you should start doing that. Can you at least give me a reason why? Yeah. and I Because they would understand that my expectations are that you're always evolving everything. Yeah. Like, I always evolve with the data. Yes. I Makes just, sense. And, and, and then with, with finding and building staffs, you got to let your head coaches build the staffs. Yeah. I would I would make sure the board of trustees, wherever I was at, understood you've hired me to do a job. Yeah. You can't do my job and then expect me to be responsible for the outcome of this job. Agreed. You have to give it to me, and if I screw it up, then you can hold me fully responsible. Yeah. But I will be responsible for the outcome of this, not you. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I just think they're bad at it. I think it's hard conversations. It makes people uncomfortable to have. No, I think you're 100% right. You are 100% right. And I absolutely so. think there's many, many, many schools that can win right now. We will disagree on that, and that is okay. That's the wonderful thing about college football. Was Washington one of those schools? No. They made the playoffs a couple of years ago. And I they know got, they got blew out, but they won. They win two games or in. They, they, they're hoisting it. I, there was no way they were going to win two games against those teams. Like, that was never going to happen. They could they could win the Pac-12. They lost to the best team that they played to get there, USC. But I just, I, I don't I don't buy it. Call me crazy. Okay. So, the, the way that the landscape is right now, there are very few teams that can win it the way that college football is currently constructed. I do think it takes a massive, massive budget because we know how recruiting yeah. works. Yeah, 100%. Like I, it's not waterfalls and facilities. No. I promise. No, 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 no. no. It's not that. It's, don't get me wrong. Like you got you to gotta spend some of the money on other stuff. You need a big pharmaceutical department. You think LSU got a big pharmaceutical department? I bet that's a lot better today than it was before. <laughs> All right. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. All of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms, etc., are over there. Uh, you can find anything about us over at winningcureseverything.com. Go to smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN. That's W-I-N. You get 20% off your order. And it doesn't matter how order or how big that order is. And if it's over $40, it's going to ship for free. So smackapparel.com, use promo code WIN, W-I-N. You get 20% off your order. And go check out Tunica. Tunica, Mississippi is the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books, awesome steakhouses, awesome concerts, awesome golf courses, awesome everything. Tunicatravel.com is the website for more information. Go do yourself a favor and check it out. Go visit Tunica. Uh, We have been there many, many times. It is fantastic. I think that is going to wrap it up for College Football Talk for the week. We appreciate you guys being here. We're looking forward to the Heisman. We are looking forward to the Army-Navy game. We will will knock out our bowl stuff and have it up next week at some point. Uh, The first bowl game is Friday, December 20th. It'll be up several days before that. We'll figure all, uh, all of the 
scheduling out as far as that goes. But, yeah, we are looking forward to all of this. Hopefully, you will stick around with us. We will see you all again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.